जय गुरु क्वेश्चन आई हैव सम एंगजाइटी एंड फियर व्हेन आई मेडिटेट नॉट टू बिगिन विथ बट एज आई गो डीपर इन टू द मेडिटेशन आई फील स्ट्रॉन्ग फीलिंग्स ऑफ फियर इवन पैनिक दैट आई एम गोइंग टू डिसअपियर एंड लूज माय सेल्फ आंसर you know that the meditation practice is designed to dissolve the illusion all that you think you are even though the fear is not real it is normal to experience it until there is the conviction that you are not this body mind that you were never born and that you will never die question if all the layers of illusion are erased i mean if i am erased then i am afraid that i won't be able to function in the world is that not the case answer here you are believing yourself to be the doer which is an illusion you were never the doer everything happens spontaneously you do not make things happen without the power of presence you cannot function question When I am around some people who are very ill or dying the fear about my own mortality arises when I do meditation the fear subsides somewhat but it never goes away completely you can read about death and become tranquil but still when I think about it the fear arises i am not able to face death ramakant maharaj says there is nothingness and in the nothingness there is the fullness you return to the ocean of awareness but one thing i'm not clear about is if this body this entity will stay answer at the end of the bodily life everything dissolves for conviction we need to erase the ego quiet in the mind let the mind drop back into source use the nam mantra to keep hammering yourself as long as fear is still around it means that you don't have the conviction that you are that that you are beyond the body mind that you are eternal omnipresent that you are the presence behind everything it is easy to read but absorbing the knowledge takes more time questioner I noticed it takes more time it sinks in little by little conceptually i understand but emotionally if someone close to me is suffering or close to death then immediately the fear comes answer who is suffering you are still viewing yourself as a separate entity and someone else as a separate entity suffering is caused by identification with the body form you are not that fear is an illusion like other emotions and thoughts they are not real but we have been brought up with them and they have become part of our illusory makeup we have been conditioned to protect ourselves and feel fear believing ourselves to be separate selves when we are not there is only oneness one presence and we are all part of that it is the power or energy behind the body mind that enables it to function so the fear is something that will reduce with your practice because when you realize that there is no you then there is no fear but you need the conviction that there is no you that you do not exist all that exists is one reality and when you are more in touch with that ultimate reality will begin to emerge because you are beginning to dissolve and when this happens the fear will dissolve then little by little everything will fall away when you know you are eternal what is there to fear there is no death and there is no birth 
you need more convincing. The knowledge has to go from the head to the heart so that the core of your being accepts it. Maharaj used to say that it is very easy for the uneducated, illiterate devotees because when the master tells them that they are ultimate truth, the devotees accept it without thinking, without question, without counter-arguments. The fear you speak of will disappear when the knowledge is fully accepted and absorbed, when you know that you are not this entity. It has already started to happen. Just continue with your practice and be patient. Question. I have noticed some changes. Those things that I used to desire are much less now. For example, before, if I wanted to buy a new iPhone, I would buy it. There was no way I would not. Now that knee-jerk reaction has gone. The desires are much less. Answer. Yes, what happens is a loosening of attachments and attractions to worldly things. And slowly, slowly, you become more inward and are able to remain as the witness. As the witness, you are more able to look at yourself, look at the world from a distance, one removed, and watch the movie instead of your being part of it, involved in it as you were before. There is detachment, observing, whereas before the seen and the seer were virtually entangled. Now the seer is more detached from the scene. You're more relaxed, which means that you do not get drawn so easily into illusion. You're making good progress. Continue with the hammering and absorbing the teachings, contemplating them and convincing yourself that you're not the body-mind, that you're not your name or persona, that you never were. Question. I've always had a problem with the bhajans. I don't have a good voice either. Answer. Many people have difficulties with the bhajans. And it does not matter if you do not have a good voice. The bhajans are expressions of devotion. What is important is not your voice, but that you sing with a pure heart. Question. It would be nice if you gave me a name. If you did, what would that name be? Answer. It may be nice, but it won't help you. We are trying to get rid of all identifications. So if I were to assign you a name, it would just become a new layer, another attachment. Question. When one's, when one's guru is no longer in the body, it can be hard for the devotee. It's not surprising then that some devotees go looking for another guru. My question is, is it acceptable? Answer. You should not change your guru. The guru is not the form. The true guru is a sad guru who has taken your hand and will walk with you for eternity. He has given his life to his devotees. Therefore, to change gurus is basically cheap. It is a betrayal of trust, which shows that the devotee's trust in the guru was never very strong in the first place. Without trust, there is no integrity. Jai Guru. <laughs>